We're gonna shock the world. Is your attack angle is only four and a half, not like 11. <laughs> Almost 140 ball speed. Dude, that, that was the best swing I've had today. Dude, that swing was so good. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. That is the best six I have hit. What's up, guys? Got the boy Z Rad in the house. Well, technically, we're not in the house, but, right. but it's 70 degrees in November now. Love that. It's crazy. So, my boy Zach has been playing a lot. You haven't checked out his channel. Playing at like eight, the nine million thousand yards apparently. Uh, golf courses I have no desire of playing on. Um, <laughs> yeah, so go check out the Ross Bridge one because that was like what 8100? 8191. Yeah, no, pass. I'm good. 7191. We're talking. <laughs> say 8000 is crazy. But so he's had a couple misses lately. We're going to give it a little bit of a cleanup. It's arguable me and like three other people in his life have played probably the most golf with him here in the last couple years. So we kind of know what's going on. And uh, he's got a little miss happening right now where it's kind of bleeding a little right. Is that right? Kind of starts right, stays there. So we're going to get to the case and we're going to figure out how we're going to get Zach back on track because uh, you never know what you might see him playing in next. So it's going to work. Do it. All right. So Zach is going to lay down the law a little bit here, hitting a few shots for us. We got the old track man Dizzle here running off the old iPhone. Got numbers for coming at you guys. Aiming for the white stakes. Six iron in hand, and of course he absolutely tries to stripe the first swing of the day. Right down the old gizzard. Oh, not too bad. 201 on the first swing, not bad. Is that carry? Yeah. A pretty good little shot there. So we got ball speed of 136 basically, club speed of 101, that carry was 191. A little spinny on the shot, would you say, Zach? Yes. And uh, getting super windy outside now, so sorry for the audio, it's a little shaky, but a couple things that you were talking about when you came in, right, is you got a miss that starts right, stays right. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. And you always kind of feel like the club face is getting a little bit open. A little bit open, which also causes like a lot of spin mm -hmm. and just like that first one I hit, 201 carry, that one was like 190 carry. Yeah. That's not great. There's an 11 <laughs> yard difference in carry from one shot being too spinny to the next one being hit well. Right. Especially if you're needing to carry a bunker at, let's say, 195. I mean, that's a massive difference in how you play the hole. Either plugged in the left of a bunker or up there 10 feet for birdie. So. 100%. So. We talked about it already a little bit off camera, but one of the things we just kind of talked about is his left hand grip, right? And so as that kind of demonstrates for the camera, a good way to get your left hand on the golf club is to try and match the shaft so that it follows the way your knuckles kind of naturally hang. And then that way it doesn't feel like you're kind of twisting your hand across the top of the golf club. And so for Zach, that's a little stronger than normal, right? Would you say? But it's not like the awkward way of like just going, ratcheting your hand over. So that's basically what I did at first. And that's like, hey, get a stronger grip. I was like, okay, sure. And then I'm all in there, all awkward. Felt terrible. He's like, hey, it's easier to do it this way. <laughs> so. so, but it's, it doesn't feel weird, but definitely feels more shut. And that's helped, yeah. at least initially right now, eliminate part of the starting right problem. Is that sure. right? For so sure. we got the face a little more shut, just in the grip. And then now we're going to start seeing some swing stuff. And we'll hop up in here and kind of talk about why... Zach Radford misses a few shots to right field. That sounded kind of crispy there, Radford. It's not good. It's a little left. It actually drew. 200 carry again, 199.6. So I'm going to hop in front of the camera next, ladies and gentlemen, kind of show you why Zach misses the shots the way he misses it and uh, we'll get to work tell you what 
I bet he can't wait to get some new sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just heard, we're, you know, we, uh, you know there, there may not be a story about us going to get him fitted. And it uh, looks like now he's finding himself into some new irons. So maybe there's something coming down the road for him. But anyways, all right, so let's get to work. So for those of you that don't know, Zach is a lot taller than me and a lot taller than most. Stop doing that. Like when I'm shooting it, we see your nose hair. Uh, <laughs> so he's taller, but he also has longer arms too. So he's, he's a long armed, tall individual. So a lot of his delivery stuff has to come from a more vertical plane because of those uh, body features, okay? So where he gets himself in a little bit of trouble is when he starts to bend to the right too early, he gets a little, what most people will call stuck. And so you, what you will see is his elbow gets kind of trapped behind his hip, left arm gets out in front of his right. And in this scenario for Zach, there's too much golf club and too much ground getting in the way. And he's trying to figure out a way to how to get the club out of that scenario, right? And so the easiest, fastest way to do that is to rip the handle up, but that leaves the face open. And that's where he ends up dumping a lot of those shots that go to the right field for him, right? The alternative to that would be you shut the face down and then you hit a hard left and then you get the, you know, your quote unquote 2A miss, right? And so in Zach's case, a lot of the feels that we've been working on is trying to feel more that he's putting his arms back out in front of his body, right? And trying to keep the right side a little higher so that he doesn't have a collapse into his right side too soon, which also limits his ability to rotate. But then he puts the club back out in front and we add a little bit of vertical where he starts to feel himself launch from the ground, get a little taller to match his height and his wingspan. The shot starts to go a lot higher and starts to fix a lot of these two-way misses and starting line problems, right? So what we're doing today is getting Zach basically unstuck, if you will, right? And it's a better player problem. You usually see a lot of lower handicap golfers who try to get the ball from the inside out too much. Not so much in Zach's case, because he's trying maybe more to squeeze the ball into stingers, right? So if you see that little bit of that collapse. And so for him, when he gets tall at impact and more vertical in his delivery plane, the ball flight goes up. That's not exactly a stinker. So <laughs> we're trying to hit high bombs with six irons that hold greens, right? So the more ethical approach, if you will, when you're trying to play tournament golf, rather than stinging it from 200 out. <laughs> so let's get back to it and let's kind of show you what he's doing while he's swinging it and uh, let's hit the highlight reels all right so zach we just i just kind of ran through the gamut yeah how would you describe the feels though because i tell a lot of students i say it one way but you might feel it another yeah so what's the feeling for you so for starters change my grip has been awesome um that's just an easy way. There's other ways to get the club face to return, whether that's like kind of twisting in the downswing right. or at the top being real bowed. Neither one of those work great for me. It's hard for me to consistently deliver the club with really either one of those thoughts. The one where I'm twisting coming down works a little better than being kind of with that what would you call that at the top? That's flex. They're flex. bowed. Yeah. yeah, bowed at the top. But literally just setting up with the club face already in a good position, and I don't have to worry about that. It's definitely the way that I'm wanting to go. And then as far as the rest of the swing, I get to the top, and I'm thinking that these hands are kind of pushing out this way. Mm -hmm. And then through impact, I'm getting tall with my right side. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem getting tall with my left. Yeah, you've won that battle. And so the left's always <laughs> gonna extend, but my right side likes to stay compressed. Mm -hmm. So if I can just focus on pushing a little bit, right. so getting tall with the right side and then just like kind of pushing my hands out. Yeah. Not necessarily out here, but just like out. Yeah. And then Gives you a little better width and also kind of help move your chest too, something we talked yep. about too, right? Yeah. So come and demonstrate for the peoples what that feeling looks like. So a lot of times for Zach, if he, he's he got two things he's got going on. He's got to get his arms freed up again and add a vertical at the bottom in the right time. So if he doesn't add the vertical at the right time, he'll see a ball start more left with a fade. If he has a vertical at the right time, we see what he kind of does there, where things start to get 
a little bit higher in trajectory. 100 on the club speed. 94 on the carry, 8,000. So again, a little, little spinny-ish on that one. I would like to see with the six iron, like that low 200s yep. carry and my misses being more like that 96, 97 than the 190 to 193. Yep. So what do I need to do to get that spin? Right. From So we talked about this prior. Let's check your body lines. Make yeah. sure you're not lining left. Because yep. in your case, you try to, like a lot of people talk about the railroad track left mentality. Yeah. And in your case, when you do that, you leave the face open. That's going right. to put more spin on it. So sure. give me a little better body lines on this next one. Right. And again, ladies and gentlemen, what he's trying to fix here is, is the way his style is, is he has to feel like he releases across his body, not out in front of his body. Yeah. Right? So that's what we're trying to it can aim his chest, hips, all that a little more right so he can release across it and keep that spin rate a little bit more in control because 8,000 with the six irons, a little much. You're smidge left there, homie. That's actually good. I've been right. There we go. Felt okay. 997, 1997 on the carry. Was it a groove fan? No, not really. Okay, pretty good. Like, still high spin rate, which is surprising to see it carry a little bit farther. Ball speed was up a little bit, almost at 137. Let's run it again. Well, that one's probably hit a mile. <laughs> left, though, too. That was left. <laughs> it's a 138 and a half ball speed. 199 carry spin rate was definitely down do that same move with your arms and give me a vertical at the bottom that wasn't hit as far as i thought it was yeah it's also being normalized on a windy day with range balls it's always tough to get good data on days like that that's a little bit more what we're looking for so there you go, 137 and a half, 202 yeah. carry. That's, that Fake. is kind of what we're looking for right there. And then, you know what the other news here is? This, 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 that's uh, gonna shock the world, mm -hmm. is your attack angle is only four and a half, not like 11. That's pretty good. <laughs> I normally like to chop wood. You, you and Cameron chant with a negative nine attack angles with a six iron. Dude, <laughs> Craziness. I, I can get negative, I've gotten negative like 15. Oh my with God. My, with the four iron and stingers. And actually hit it solid. I've had people hit negative 15 after they top it. <laughs> Give the ladies and gentlemen one more show. So basically, the, the, the big keys for Radford, ladies and gentlemen, is left hand grip first so the face has a chance. Yep. From there, arms have to start getting out in front more, or, or in his case, feeling like the right side stays higher longer. Yep. And that will result in a hard pull unless he applies verticals at the bottom. That's probably pretty close, huh? Yeah. That one should be more like the one before. 199 carry. 8,000, just under 8,000 on the spin. I like I it. get that spin closer to like 72 or 3. Yeah. That's, that's what we're looking for. That's where getting your arms to feel like they're releasing across your body is going to help lower the spin rate. Does that make sense? I think so. Here, I'll explain that in a little well, bit. So... Zach had the having the right miss, found himself biasing his body left in anticipation for it. But as with most, he can get carried away in a little bit. And so when he gets his body lines left of his target too much, the tendency again is to bend to that right, but is to hold the face open more to that target, right? Because we know that the target's more out in front of us now. If I'm aiming left with my body, the target's over here. I want to try to delay the face, and so. The feeling for him where he has to feel like he's releasing across the body, the exaggeration would be like if I stood like this, way closed out to the first fairway, I'd have to smash the golf club back against my body basically in order to feel like it's covering to make the ball go back to the target. 
right? So if I aim way right, and went like this, the ball would go back to the target, and I put a lot of money on the fact that it's probably not gonna have a lot of spin and come a lot lower, right? So in Zach's case, when he starts losing the ball flight with a lot of spin, the first thing I would encourage him to start thinking about is feeling like he's aiming a little too far right and feel like he has to kind of, again, get the club out in front to cover the golf ball more and feel like the face is going more into his body than out away from his body. You picking up on that, Rapper? Yep, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Give it a run. Dude, that was so good. Almost 140 ball speed. Dude, that, that was the best swing I've had today, right there. That was compressed. 202 carry. That's what we're looking for. And tell me that spin number you want to see again. 72. <laughs> Let's go. So again, in this case for Radford, and when I teach a lot of these higher speed players, little things like body alignment yeah. is moving your spin rate up almost 1,000 RPMs in some cases. And that obviously affects distance. That swing was so good. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. That is the best six iron I've hit in a long time. Not necessarily the longest, yeah. but that was compressed. The trajectory was good. It was. And that ball, when it left the face, it looked like it knew where it was going. Yeah, yeah. It had a homing beacon on it. Two in a row. 37 ball speed, so it was a little lower on the, sp on the speed off the face. Yeah. I mean, just a little spinnier. That one? That was about right. One was 71 again. So it was, the one before, honestly, the compression. was awesome. The, like, I just felt super fluid through impact. Mm -hmm. And it felt easy. Yeah. Like, the speed felt easy. Um, but that one there, I was pretty, I mean, that's, that's your happy miss. with that. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the difference in the ball speed, right? Two and a half miles an hour difference in the ball speed where you didn't quite squeeze it. Yeah. Right? So just give me a little bit more aim right. Let's see what happens. Okay. There you go. For a miss that started right and tried to come back, you still have 139 ball speed on it. That was probably the longest one today. 202 carry. But, I mean, if, like, like you were saying, though, if your miss stays around 200, yeah. even though you didn't absolutely squeeze the crap out of it, that's what we're looking for. That is what we're looking for. That one, two swings ago, that that feel, if I could just, like, bottle that up, <laughs> that's what wakes you up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang. So, why did you have the lob wedge? I don't know. We didn't even hit this in the video. <laughs> It's well, like, we got, we got it's like this video's Instagram. It's like, hey, where's your clothes at? <laughs> like, why you got 60? We I don't know just, what kind of he added them. videos you're watching. It's Lego Star Wars. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should take the outtakes. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we're here. We wrapped it up. Got Zach cleaned up a little bit. Got him hit a little more solid. So, again, a couple of the big takeaways in Zach's you know, game, which is – tough when you're out there shooting videos all the time to be focused on what you're doing in your game and focused on the content you're making so yeah. in this scenario there's a couple big takeaways is left hand grip getting it strong strong enough the right way checking his body lines he doesn't aim left try to leave the face open which in those scenarios causes him to bend to the right and leave the face open a little bit and hit some solid shots but still go about 30 feet offline so once we get the setup features done the next move for him is to get the arms back out in front and add some verticals out of the ground to get him a little more solid. You say it's about fair? Yeah. No, I appreciate it. So, well, it's fun working with high speed players. Makes my job easy. Swing's been feeling better, and with those tips, you know, I think it's gonna get even dialed in more. Yep. And hopefully we have some new clubs coming. I'm hoping. Fingers I'm crossed. Hoping. And fun fact, when you're hitting it good, it's a good time to get in for a lesson so you can see what you're doing, so we can get it on video, get on tape, get on track, man so we can see these numbers, so we have that to fall back on when things may go sideways. So, with that, Radford, thank you as always. Appreciate it. Until next time, gang, go check him out. Hopefully he hits it a little bit straighter. Hopefully.